now understand the clinical manifestations of these patients and initially you might actually think that you are reading about a patient who is having pancreatitis because nausea vomiting and abdominal pain are up one of the very highlighting striking features of the disease and that will further decrease oral intake of the patient and if oral intake is decreased mother has stopped insulin also see uh, the usual query here is that why is there so much of nausea and vomiting so i want to tell you that ketonemia can contribute to uh, irritation of the chemoreceptor trigger zone therefore there would be protracted vomiting in this case and simultaneously the abdominal pain will mainly be concentrated in the epigastrium so i said even a thought process of yours could be because uh, in any patient with acute abdomen you might get a baseline amylase levels done and serum amylase levels are grossly elevated in these patients the background information if provided in the mcq will always be great i mean if he begins by saying it's a type 1 diabetes mellitus patient who has recently stopped insulin due to various reasons it could be stoppage of insulin due to infection it could be a marriage ceremony in the fa family it could be simply that the child has uh, stopped eating because of food poisoning episode that occurred recently but if he gives you this information then uh, i think from the exam perspective the question would be very very easy for you because that's the standard info that you know from your medical college days i mean type 1 diabetes mellitus patients are predisposed in insulin deficiency of the absolute variety to develop this ketoacidosis now my next problem is that because blood sugar is rising therefore the plasma osmolality will also be rising you very well know plasma osmolality would be a range in the range of about uh, 275 to 295 milliosmoles some books say about 280 uh, to 290 my point is in this case the sugar values are rising so the osmolality of the plasma could go up to about 320 milliosmoles see the second topic that we will study after this is uh, hyper osmolar coma there the values can even be more than this but whenever there is going to be an increase in the plasma osmolality it will contribute to fluid shifts across the brain and because of these fluid shifts that will occur across the brain therefore this child will become lethargic there can be stupor there can be presence of coma so earlier i was just highlighting the word cerebral edema but at the moment i am saying that apart from acidosis that damages the blood brain barrier the gross elevations of sugar in the body of this patient the hyperosmolarity is also contributing to fluid shifts and development of cns manifestations the high sugar will also contribute to development of osmotic diuresis so therefore there would be a polyuria and uh, most of the time you will notice that if a unconscious uh, unresponsive type 1 diabetes mellitus patient is admitted to my hospital because he is unconscious unresponsive i don't want the patient to soil the hospital bed so i might put up a condom catheter or a foley's catheter and the bag will become full i mean there would be extensive amount of diuresis that occurs in these patients which is osmotic diuresis polyuria definition you very well know more than three liters on a daily basis and if the patient at the moment is uh, not lost his ability to you know respond to situations early part of the disease uh, the family member might say that uh, this child was asking for water again and again and subsequently lost consciousness and anyway you have noticed that uh, the euro bag is full there is a substantial amount of diuresis occurring in the child as a result of this because uh, cns manifestations are pronounced the message is encephalopathy might be written in the question uh, 